conflicts are not going to end. Wars will still be fought. Humans will continue to die. But that toll can be minimized. Frequency of wars can be lowered. Only if men start fighting unmanned warfare. Why do wars happen? War essentially happens to resolve a conflict. And now machines can fight wars for humans. Unmanned warfare can reduce the number of deaths. Yes indeed. Drone wars kill less number of humans than manned warfare. But can India also fight unmanned war? First, let us see how world is preparing for unmanned warfare. living at the beginning of the fifth generation warfare, the unmanned warfare. On 4th February 2002, an MQ-1 armed predator fired a Hellfire missile at three men standing near a known Mosaic base at Zawarji in Afghanistan. A month later, on 4th March 2002, a Predator drone destroyed a Taliban machine gun bunker, pinning down an Army Ranger team of Dakugra Mountain. Fifth generation warfare weapons since then became assassination tools. The Afghan campaign uh, had uh, uh, signified the use of drones in countering terrorists and also to achieve strategic goals of the uh, country by the ISAF forces, International Security Assistance Forces. So drone technology was extensively used in Afghanistan. Human experience on UAVs paved way to experiment with unmanned fighter jets. In 1965, when I took war, part in the war with Pakistan, I used Hunt, Hawker Hunter, made by UK, operating from Halwara. And we were attacked by F-86, made by American, flown by these uh, Pakistanis. When they came, now here we had eyeball contact, and then ensued in a dogfight. But today's scenario, difficult, unlikely. Subsequent to that in 71, same thing, they use F-86, we use same Hawker Hunter I was flying and the very first day on the 4th of uh, December, I shot down another F-86 over Dhaka. The point I'm making here is that from 3rd generation, we passed over the 4th to 5th generation now and now we have come to a point where we have QF-16. It is a pilotless aircraft is going to prove lethal in the times to come. This is what one has to look at it, that is the future. Warfare or particularly the unmanned aircrafts and unmanned systems are being viewed more as a forced multiplier. That means you are not looking at those systems as an ultimate weapon to fight, to fight a war. But essentially you are looking at those systems which will assist you to enhance your present capabilities. This is mainly from a point of view because the research in this arena is still at a, a nascent stage in certain fields and at a slightly developed stage in other fields. The world is uh, getting, gearing up for uh, fifth generation. When we say fifth generation, unmanned. 
uh, vehicles. When we say unmanned vehicle, it could be under the sea, above the sea, uh, on in on the ground as well as on the air. All sorts of uh, you know uh, vehicles are being prepared with weapon, without weapon. When we say without weapon, it is for meant for surveillance. With weapon, it is for destruction and other action. This is going to be hybrid warfare. So you're going to have very antique systems uh, that are going to coexist and fight wars along with very advanced systems. So there's no such thing as, you know, fourth, fifth or anything. In our case, we are way back. We are at the very early stages of uh, hybrid warfare. So this is where we are. We Some older systems will still be current 20 years from now, but some of the more advanced systems for preemptive strikes and so on will be unmanned. Um, and that's the capability we need to develop indigenously. Americans are constantly working on retaining an edge, technological edge. When the world is going from third to fourth generation, the Americans are moving from fifth to sixth generation. The whole ideation is that they must have one generation and a half gap. China understands this. China is also moving towards this. The sad part is in India, the technological aspects are getting subsumed in the political bickering that goes on in our country. So the technology and the role of technology, apart from the digital world, which India is pushing for, and this, which in my view, this government is very keen on, is, is, is gaining some salience. With drones comes the precision strike capability. However, precision strikes started happening in 1968 when the first laser-guided bombs were dropped in Vietnam. During Falkland Island dispute in 1982, the Argentinians fired three French-made cruise missiles and hit two British destroyers and another of their ship. In August 1998, cruise missiles again take out the Al Shifa pharmaceutical factory in Khartoum, North Sudan, where Bin Laden was suspected to be at that time. But the real fifth generation war started when Predator drone fired its Hellfire missile in Afghanistan. The Predator drone could only carry two Hellfire. Soon, Reaper drone MQ-9 with four Hellfires and two 500-pound bombs replaced Predator. The Reaper is soon to be replaced by the mq drones now being tested. This new series will be networked, capable of partial autonomy, all weather and modular with capabilities supporting electronic warfare, close air support, strike and multiple intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance platforms. Two MQM platforms, the Boeing Phantom Ray and the Northrop Grumman X-47B are being tested. Now these drones, initially, I mean, the technology, people start thinking about it, they thought about it, was very, as old as me, that's 75 years ago. The more Tiger Moth was, uh, was tried out into a drone first. That is the beginning, which I remember. But today you have a drone like uh, uh, Reaper and uh, Brock and uh, what we have. The point I'm making here is today, the drone can replace a pilot, it can loiter for hours together, which we couldn't do. Today we need a refueler to extend our endurance in the air. They fly best L by D, what I mean the lift and drag ratio. What I mean by this that they can really stay airborne for a very, very long time. And the amount of sensors they carry, the wealth of sensors which is available in a drone is amazing really amazing the aircraft it can be used for intelligence it can be used for surveillance it can be used for uh, picturizing giving a real-time picture sitting across the globe because you have three systems working in this a guy could be across the globe he needn't be way over the target through the satellite you have a communication and you can use it even for firing 
which has been done successfully. STB2 built by Lockheed Martin is another platform in MA series. Hypersonic test vehicle is carried to the edge of space by a launch vehicle where it hangs around waiting for target coordinates. Once a mission is assigned, it can travel to the target at the speed of 13,000 miles per hour, that is 20 Mach. Unlike the Predators and Reapers, the Falcon has no engines. It is a disposable platform. The explosives are inside the airframe. A Falcon STV can put ordinance on any designated spot in the world in less than an hour. Presently, if you really look at the combat UAVs, essentially what has happened is that what we call them as UCAVs, uh, those systems have come into light. But to have UAVs which will replace your existing manned fighter aircraft, that technology is still slightly far away. So right now, major companies in the world, particularly the US agencies and the US companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing and other companies, they are doing certain amount of research and certain level of confidence has emerged. But it will still take some more amount of a time where you can replace a manned fighter aircraft by using a combat aircraft. Uh, and then only we can think of really looking at a warfare which will be totally uh, electronic warfare which has been fully assisted by the machines which are not driven by the men. US has prepared next series MQMB on drawing board. These drones will be more autonomous, they will be sent out in swarms and many can be controlled by one single human on the ground through a master control drone in the swarm. Then will come MQMC series. These drones will be completely autonomous and will accomplish the 3F missions that is find, fix and finish in future. They will even be capable of aerial dog fighting with enemy aircraft and taking out enemy air defense missile systems. US is also developing FAXS, the 6th generation air superiority fighter plane for its navy which will be controlled by artificial intelligence software and pilot will just enjoy the aerial ride. But surprisingly, China has surpassed even the US in swarm technology. Um, China is also planning to sell these to many countries because these are very inexpensive. Uh, and secondly, they will get the real-time surveillance uh, from, the, um, uh, from the adversaries positions, military positions. So in other words, um, uh, this is a new element in China's thinking. US has also achieved success in flying unmanned QF-16 fighter jet. The retired F-16 fighter jets of US Air Force are converted into unmanned targeted drones which fly by itself. In my time, we were pulling 6-7 Gs and looking 6 o'clock and uh, uh, way behind checking for the enemy. Today's pilot doesn't have to do all this. The avionics, the things he has on board does everything for him. Slowly, slowly, even the cost of these things are getting so higher and exorbitant, the war is getting costlier than what it was in my time. Today, even we are thinking, training a pilot on such a costly aircraft is becoming a hair-raising for any government to manage this. So they are stepping away from a thing which is called the drone, the UAV. India is developing UAV Rustam 2 which can be used as a leverage to develop indigenous unmanned fighter jet. When I told you the Rustum 2, which is uh, supposed to be flying at about 30,000 uh, feet or so, in addition to that, it can fly for about 30 hours continuously. So this is as good as any other modern uh, aircraft or a uh, fighter aircraft type. Um, once we have completed those technology for automatic landing and takeoff, I'm sure we will be able to migrate towards them also. First thing, as a pilot who has flown F-16 in early today, he must be my age and maybe more, he would never retire as long as his limbs are working. He carries on forever and ever because his rich experience is never wasted because he does the same job sitting on the ground across the globe. He doesn't even have to move. Look at the cost effectiveness what it comes down, no, no risk to his life, we don't need the ejection seat, we don't need all that and you have a full-fledged combat this aircraft can do sitting on the ground. I think it's my dream to be able to do this job if it comes to this country, I would love to do this anytime. You can fly a drone, you can fly an aircraft. 
use the mission control computer that does the flying. Uh, that's easier to do. Uh, actually, a pilot in the plane is a liability. If you don't have a pilot in the plane, it, the plane is a far deadlier weapons platform than if you have a pilot. Why? Because any time a plane pulls more than six times gravity, the kind of force, uh, you pilots actually lose consciousness. Human body cannot take more than 6G sustained uh, for a very long time. They black out, they grey out, black out and they crash. So, you know, unmanned systems therefore are far better uh, fighting systems than if you put the man in the loop. loop the, the man in the loop is a weakness. The pilot fly, flying a plane is the weakness. Uh, because machines don't have, they don't grey out, they don't black out. They don't lose consciousness. They can pull very tight turns at 9G, 9 times the force of gravity, 12 times G, 16G. Depends on what you want to do, how good your metallurgy is, how good your software is, how good your algorithms are. So this is the kind of stuff that we are entering. Um, we may have some, uh, some, shall we say, uh, some capabilities in the software aspects, but unfortunately not in the hardware, which is the real thing. While US is leading the manned and unmanned fighter jet and drone program, Russia is not far behind and China closely following the suit. With defensive capabilities, matching offensive technologies are also being developed. Russia is developing 6th and 7th generation fighter jets. Russia's 6th generation unmanned fighter jets flying at hypersonic speed will be taking on the enemy in swarms. These aerial groups would be able to interact and transit through space. Russia has developed a super high frequency cannon. The microwave cannon mounted on Buck missile platform is designed to knock out aircraft, drones, guided missiles and any airborne high precision weapons in a radius of 10 km using electronics. China by the way is no surprise. China did since the 1990s is to tap the Israeli technology on the drones uh, and extensively invested. Uh, after the 1989 Tiananmen Square, there has been a, uh, a, uh, an arms embargo by the Western European countries as well as by United States. Uh, however, there were several surreptitious transfers from Israel to China, especially in the Heron UAV projects. Uh, at that time, the, after the contracts were signed, the US vetoed the proposals because this violates the end user agreements between uh, US and Israel. Uh, so while the Heron technology has been uh, taken away from the uh, rather stopped uh, for the Chinese, the Chinese still got hold of several hundred Heron uh, UAVs. Since then, they deployed in Taiwan Straits primarily because they considered that as their primary challenge. Chinese soon started reverse engineering the UAV program. When it comes to swarming drones, China has relegated both US and Russia. In November 2016, state-owned China Electronics Technology Group Corporation claimed to have shattered American record of launching a swarm of 50 drones by a swarm of 67 drones flying together. With this, China is leading the future of unmanned warfare. One PLA soldier would be able to control hundreds and thousands of drones. The Pentagon report says that People's Republic of China plans to produce 42,000 land and sea-based unmanned systems between 2014 and 2023. And the latest test has added new feeder in the Chinese cap of drone technology. Last month, they have uh, uh, flown 1,000 UAVs in formation um, uh, across some uh, TV towers uh, in Guangdong. Um, and uh, uh, basically to suggest that they can swarm uh, in different uh, theaters in future. These are very, very small UAVs that they have um, uh, shown to the public. Um, but it also indicates that there is a uh, there is a active program for bigger UAVs, um, which uh, can also um, uh, be converted into UCAVs. 
It's not a matter whether you want to fight a war with China. The question is whether you have uh, you will have the wherewithal to fight any kind of deal with the hostilities involving China. Uh, they're already flying as we do uh, UAVs for save, uh, surveillance uh, and so on. They fly, uh, you know, UAVs. We fly UAVs on the LAC. Uh, that happens all the time. Uh, but we do not have the armed UAVs <coughs> doing the actual destruction work. Uh, and that, I think, will take some for, uh, time for us to get to that capability. But, but as I said at the very beginning, if we do not have the patience to develop our own, which is what Rustam II is, uh, Rustam II is the armed uh, predator like the US Predator drone. It's uh, something like that, or Global Hawk, really. Predator, Global Hawk, it depends what you want. Uh, UAV can go in can do surveillance and also be armed so it finds a target it can autonom you know, autonomously decide to take out the target and fire the weapon you know you can do that uh, you can program the uh, system to do that so it's all in that realm of it's, it's now being realized in the more advanced uh, countries but we are not there but we have to start somewhere but we don't seem to have the patience uh, we want to get somewhere very fast and we think imports uh, you know importing things will help you do it. It, it it's not going to help you at all china is now developing a near space drone with stealth capabilities that can evade anti-aircraft weapons and fly at 700 kilometers per hour Chinese believe that the drones have become an indispensable weapon in modern warfare because they can play an important role in high resolution reconnaissance, long distance precision strikes, anti-submarine operations and aerial combat. China already have a range of drones squadrons matching US like Wing Long series, CH-5, Cloud Shadow, CH-805, CK-20, CH-500. We have got a program called Rustam. Uh, which is an unmanned aerial vehicle, uh, Rustum 1, Rustum 2, in addition to some other uh, versions also we have made already. Uh, they are all uh, very large size and endurances are very high and uh, they are to be done with some sort of a restriction because the size is so big it can even probably clash with uh, the normal uh, flight operations. Whereas the small uh, quad rotor based uh, systems which is like a small helicopter can be used for carrying a, a, a tiny camera which can be used in a function to probably record the information. So there are two major varieties uh, in that way. The Chinese CH-5 is capable to stay in the air up to 120 hours with a range of 10,000 km giving it the longest range of all hunter killer drones. The CH-5 can carry up to 24 missiles and about 1,000 kg of equipment. Of late, China has started developing mysterious weapons which can launch a nuclear attack with a speed of 12 times higher than the speed of sound. Chinese mysterious Wu-14 hypersonic glide vehicle, which is now called DFZF, was first flight tested on 9th January 2014, can strike anywhere in the world within one hour and India is no exception. This basically will use a kinetic kill vehicle uh, and then launch uh, from the space or beyond the atmosphere. We have done successful seven tests of the hypersonic glide vehicles. The uh, US has also done certain amount of a testing. But India is also not very far behind in this field. Uh, we got BrahMos. So that also is going to reach to somewhere of a hypersonic glide vehicle. Uh, in today's world, there has been a debate whether hypersonic glide vehicles will replace the warfare of tomorrow. Essentially because today when you are talking of a scenario, say India, Pakistan, China, all the three countries are nuclear, power, nuclear weapon countries. And you developed a ballistic uh, defense shield or what we call an anti-missile shield. Uh, but that shield become redundant if you got uh, aircrafts or you got more than the aircrafts you got uh, missiles which can fly with a hypersonic speed which is more than the 5 Mach and above. Uh, so to my mind more than the uh, technology development into the UAVs the technological developments in the field of hypersonics may impact the uh, nature of a warfare in future. Hypersonics comes under the category of uh, missiles not we don't call them as uh, UAVs. Uh, hypersonics are being developed within the country, even with a collaboration with some countries. 
when it comes of developing technology india is also not far behind but able to catch the technology trail india is developing autonomous unmanned research aircraft aura the drdo's hypersonic technology demonstration vehicle hstdv intends to attain autonomous scramjet flight for 20 seconds using a solid rocket launcher booster this will test indian feasibility of developing reusable launch vehicles DRDO is trying to achieve the speed of max 6.5 at an altitude of 32.5 km. As far as we are concerned, we are in the very primitive stage. We have done certain uh, you know, experiments in our test facility and uh, we will be able to declare only after we succeed, maybe in a year or so we will do an experiment which probably will be able to declare. The question is how seriously the government is going to begin funding the program because you already have a supersonic uh, missile. Uh, the Brahmos, uh, which is supersonic, and you know what's the difference between a hypersonic glide bomb and a supersonic missile, cruise missile? Well, the hypersonic glide is you're coming in at extremely seven times the speed of sound, uh, and that's virtually uh, not uh, be hard to detect when it comes in, and it'll be very hard to take out once it's on target. So it's virtually you know, certain destruction of the target. So these are the kinds of uh, technologies that are there. Chinese are still at the testing stage, hypersonic, as, as are the Americans. No one has quite been able to overcome some of the problems that are there when you get into the glide phase uh, on a hypersonic regime. So it is very difficult technology-wise, but you know, it, it will be achieved. This whole notion of having a large number of UAVs, etc., etc., is is a very, very sloppy arrangement. The UAVs, the the what India is, is 24 by 7 surveillance cover over uh, based on AESA radars, which are uh, air penetrating, uh, the cloud penetrating radars. Then you need to have uh, ASAT capabilities. So, so these, there are large number of technologies we need to have. We, we, we seeker technology, small thing like seeker technology. I mean, you can have a precision strike capability, but if you can't seek the target and destroy it, how, what, will, what effect will it have? Future wars are going to be complex. The nature of warfare is rapidly changing. And we will find that in a country like ours, we will continue to be faced with some con sub-conventional or non-traditional forms of warfare. But the armed forces will have to remain prepared for conventional wars along our borders. It is therefore important that in this complex environment, technology is imbibed by the armed forces in a manner that we rapidly keep pace with the changing technologies before they become obsolete. Future war will be fought under the gaze of omniscient sensor. And given improved weapon system, they will be more intense and shorter duration. The telescoping of time and space will place much greater stress on military decision makers than in the past. What is your, what is your data transfer uh, capabilities? Can you have it on, on, on the net? Can, can I hook up the, our aircraft with the space-based systems? The SOMA, which we are talking about, and the BECA, which we are talking about, are basically technologies that allow you to get feed, direct feed from the satellites into your head-up display. So you know the tactical picture is as it is changing second by second or nanosecond by second. The UAV drone war is turning more intense, complex and more frequent. But what is surprising that the battle space is shifting to near space and space. India as a policy has been against the militarization of space. But when other countries are cluttering the space with new weapons and technologies, can India be a mute spectator? I foresee in the near future, uh, people will slowly talk in terms of uh, cyber war, space war and unmanned vehicle war. Only these things will go in a long way. 
in all the areas we need to uh, start some activity at this point of time in unmanned vehicles yes we are doing several active actions and it is also possible for a smaller vehicles uh, can be done by the very many companies in the country whereas the uh, cyberspace we have started in the space yet to start post uri attack uh, surgical strikes indicated uh, there has been a lot of coordination and integration of command control structures uh, real time information was provided in this case by the space agencies as well as the uh, ground level um, uh, intelligence uh, so in other words the post uri uh, uh, surgical strike post uri attack surgical strike uh, that also signified that there is a lot of integration that happened in the indian military operations how you visualize it is important if you say you are protecting your own assets it is not militarization it is rather protecting if you are uh, trying to use to destroy something then only it is sort of a militarization at this point of time we have no such a program we may have to think about it and if the policy decision is taken we can work at this area developing capabilities are not just threat oriented india needs to equip herself with potent technologies to fight fifth or sixth generation wars conflicts are imminent so are their resolutions but for that one need to have a strong edge over the enemy and in future that edge can come only with unmanned warfare